How the left seeks to criminalize political speech. Facebook was used to plan the Capitol Hill riot. Amazon shut down Parler because of Trump, not violence. And the militarized inauguration, plus Jake Tapper questions a veteran amputee member of Congress's patriotism. It was never really about stopping violence from the big tech companies and from the left and the Democrats. We know that because they didn't want to shut down violence for months when their side was doing it. We know that political violence was something the left was willing to embrace. It was about justice, they said. That's what they told us. And now when there is an outburst of reprehensible political violence that comes ideologically from the right in this Capitol Hill riot. They try to leverage this for maximum political gain. The best way to get all of this to stop, the best way to bring us together would be, of course, to be fair minded about this, to be honest and not to immediately seek to use this to bash the other side as though they're all domestic terrorists. And that's what they're doing. That is what you see happening right now. The precedent that was set with yesterday's impeachment is awful because it all rested on a false premise. If they had impeached the president of the United States for misleading the American people about what he could prove in the election, if if they were going to say that it was just unpresidential to do that, that's their opinion. And they would be on much firmer ground, although would that rise to a high crime and misdemeanor? No. But instead, what they did was say it is a direct incitement to insurrection that President Trump is guilty of. It's his fault. You see, he called for this. And then they use that. To ram through an impeachment that really ignored due process, which is supposed to exist even in Congress, ignored historical precedent and was all about one thing and one thing only, creating a one-party state in America, the destruction of the Republican Party. It's always very amusing when Democrats say that they want to see Republicans speak truth to their own side and, and reform when they really just want the collapse. And they understand that if the Republican elites and elected officials cave in to the Democrat mob on this one and cast out Trump entirely, try to erase his legacy and humiliate not just him, but also his supporters. It will be a disaster for the Republican Party. This was all based on a lie. How do we know it's a lie that Trump incited an insurrection? It's obviously true there was a riot. It's obviously true it was criminal and wrong what happened in the Capitol building. We've already said that. I'm not going to just keep repeating it endlessly so that the left wing, uh, you know, destructors of conservative media can't just get away with whatever they want, right? That's we're, tr- we're trying to prevent them from, because right now they're on a witch hunt. They want to ruin people on, on our side. But I have condemned it. I condemned it right away. And it was, uh, you know that. Okay. But they're claiming that Trump was the reason for this. Now, part of the problem they have is what Trump actually said. Let's be very clear. Play clip three. And only count the electors who have been lawfully slated, lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today, we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections, but whether or not they stand strong for our country. Peacefully and patriotically have your voices heard. If that can be considered an incitement to violence, to mob violence, for which you will be held legally responsible, which is what the Democrats are doing here. That's what they're saying. They will use a process of government to go after you. And they're even talking about possible criminal charges against Trump for this. If Go peacefully speak your mind is now a criminal act. Political speech in this country is over on the conservative side. We're done. Because they'll just say anything that they don't like. Anytime there's a rhetorical flourish, we say we must stand up and fight 
for our liberties. Oh, they're, that's a call to violence. He said fight. Oh, you, you think that's extreme? You think they won't do it? We saw this coming. You should remember that for years, the left was running a propaganda campaign. It started on the college campuses, then it filtered into the rest of the most woke outposts in society, and now it's mainstream. Now it's corporate culture. Now it's all over the, pa- all over the place. Speech equals violence. That was the big change you saw at the beginning of the Trump administration from the left. They were just openly saying that your words that I don't like are, are the equivalent of violence because it makes me feel sad or unsafe or less than or whatever. Therefore, not only if speech equals violence, can the government shut it down. And as we know, the only speech that equals violence is conservative, according to the left. That's, that's the way this game works. Not only does that happen, but if they use force to shut you down, they're justified in doing so. This is how Antifa came about. Remember the origins. They were showing up at college campuses threatening conservative speakers, threatening people that showed up to hear conservative speakers. And many of us said this is, this is a terrible harbinger of things to come. And now we see this is all the way at the top of the Democrat Party. Say things that they don't like, and they will find a way to use the, the force of government even to shut you down. This is the death of free speech if this continues. And that's exactly the plan. Democrats think they have all the answers and there's no need for robust debate or exchange of ideas because their ideas are right and your ideas are violence. This is what they really think. This is their actual belief. And they are using this. They're taking action on this idea. And now with with greater information about what really happened on Capitol Hill as we see more of the backstory, both in, in preparation for it and the social media giants' actions around it, a lot, of, a lot of stuff that does not support the overall Democrat narrative here. What they impeached the president for yesterday was essentially Trump called for an insurrection in the Capitol. That is a lie. That's not true. He didn't do that. And there are many reasons you could point to. I played the actual pertinent audio of what he said should happen. Peacefully, if someone says I call for nonviolence and then one of that person's uh, adherents says, oh, they said nonviolence, but I'm going to be violent. Is it that person's fault? Well, only if you're a Republican, only if you're a conservative. This was planned for weeks in advance. That's now clear. There were people who were gathering together online and this was what they wanted to do. So if that's the case, and it is, how can Donald Trump be guilty of incitement when there are preparations being made by people entirely independent of Trump and that that predated the speech in which he called for nonviolence anyway? Right. This is not to excuse all the stuff said about the election at all. I've got a problem with that. I think we were. It was it was exaggerated to us, the information. Uh, that they were going to be able to present. It was exaggerated, the likelihood. Now, I always thought it was a very small likelihood, as you know, but it was exaggerated on purpose to Trump voters that there was still a real hope here that the election was going to go his way. And that's, that's actual, there should be some political accountability for that. That was wrong. But this incitement to violence stuff and attacking the Capitol because of Trump, that's just not fair. It's not true. But. It's not, en- it's not enough, you see. It's not enough to point out what was said about the election afterwards that's, in retrospect, uh, that was inaccurate or it was just an, an out-and-out lie uh, because Democrats lied about the 2016 election for four years, so we'll be able to dismiss that very, very quickly. A lot of people just say, well, you know, Nancy Pelosi claimed the election was hijacked in the beginning of 2017, so what, what's that all about? Ah, no, they have to make it seem as though Trump is the leader of a domestic terrorist organization. That's what they're openly stating now. And that's because it gives them license not only to completely malign all of his supporters, which they just get joy from. I mean, they like hating Trump supporters is something that gives great joy to the left, uh, to you know, d- deriding them, 
uh, humiliating them. Th- this, unfortunately for America, the Democrat Party really, really has a culture of looking down on all Trump supporters. Um, that's just the way it is. Voters, I mean, anybody, anybody, vote, you vote for Trump, you're a bad person. They, they've adopted it. I don't think everybody who votes for Biden's a bad person. That's crazy. I think Joe Biden's a clown, and I think we're going to see just what a joke this whole presidency is when he's actually in charge. But then Kamala will take over, and we all know. Uh, But here's the other issue they've got. The social media companies all acted against Trump because they said he was the cause of this insurrection. Well, first of all, it was a riot. To call it an insurrection is also is also going beyond a fair a fair view of the facts here. It, w- it was absolutely right, and it was criminal. It was wrong, and we've said that. But they really thought, what, they were going to overtake the Capitol building and hold it? I mean, that's what a coup would be. They, they, that was the plan? I mean, I, I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that. I've certainly seen there were people that were running around taking selfies, and there were people that were attacking police officers, which is uh, something that you can't do. It's a crime. You can't do that. But the social media companies shut Trump down because they said that he was a threat of violence. The Democrats then used this, this premise that Trump was himself a threat of violence to deplatform him. Well, Trump is still in office, and the same platforms where most of the planning for the riot occurred are very much still in business because guess what? This won't be a surprise to you. It wasn't parlor where most of the actual riot planning occurred, according to left wing analysts of this now in the media. Oh, it was happening somewhere else on the Internet. A very wealthy, very, very powerful company, in fact. As I have said, the incursion of the U.S. Capitol struck at the very heart of our republic. It angered and appalled millions of Americans across the political spectrum. I want to be very clear. I unequivocally condemn the violence that we saw last week. Violence and vandalism have absolutely no place in our country and no place in our movement. Making America great again has always been about defending the rule of law, supporting the men and women of law enforcement, and upholding our nation's most sacred traditions and values. Mob violence goes against everything I believe in and everything our movement stands for. There's President Trump saying that he condemns all of the illegal activity, the riot at the Capitol, all of it. And that it goes outside of or goes against and is outside of his movement entirely. Uh, Maybe the people that were saying that I was a a traitor to Trump because I said right away the Capitol Hill riot was a disaster and not what MAGA was about. I I don't know. I haven't gotten any apologies from them yet. Not that I matter. It doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, you know, we, we all have to be clear eyed about this. We have to know what is true. And the people out there who were telling you the day of, oh, this is this is not something that's terrible. They were pandering and they were lying and they have bad judgment. I mean, talking about people in the media, because there were some of them. There were some a handful. And then I think even they backed off. But that's the president saying that this is not something that he would ever condone. He does not want political violence. It's against what he stands for. He gave an excellent speech, had to release it on the White House official uh, White House official Twitter page instead of the real Donald Trump one because it no longer exists. Now, why is that? Donald Trump was kicked off of Twitter. What's the reasoning given by Jack Dorsey, the CEO, why they do this? Because they said that he was a risk of violence. But the Iranian revolutionary regime is still able to have public pronouncements. There's all kinds of awful people on Twitter that call for violence and genocide and terrible things. They don't lose their accounts. So we know the standard is applied entirely unevenly. The standard is used to silence 
conservatives and to silence Trump most of all. But there's something else. You know, they shut down Parler, and we had Dan Bongino on to talk about that. They shut down Parler because they claimed that that's where the Capitol Hill riot was being planned and there was all this ugly stuff on there. Well, that's a lie insofar as there's no more on Parler than there is on Facebook. In fact, most of the violence and awful stuff that was being shared online about the Capitol Hill riot was, wait for it, on Facebook. They've been analyzing this, looking at it. Facebook was, because it has a much larger user base. I said this, as, I, as soon as this happened, I said, uh, there's crazy stuff on Facebook all the time. Ah, but Amazon Web Services, Amazon crushed Parler. And did you know that Parler was actually working with Amazon and, and, and trying to take action to improve its moderation? They're saying, yes, we want to get rid of bad content. We want to get rid of violent and you know, evil, racist stuff on Parler. The same way that there's that terrible stuff on all the social media platforms. But Parler doesn't have quite the resources. So they were getting behind, but they were working to be better on it. They, they have terms of service and they have the, a, a rule of law standard. But they crushed Parler. They didn't crush Twitter. They didn't shut down Facebook, obviously. Now, let's, let's look at this for a second here. What is, what is the new standard that has been set up? It is now established that Facebook was the place that allowed the Capitol Hill riot to be planned more so than any other. Well, given what we've been told in recent days, that means that Amazon and Google and and you name it need to ambush, take down and destroy Facebook. It's a it's a question of life and death. It's a question of our democracy and preventing political violence. Awful things were planned on Facebook, so I guess those really moral and ethical major tech companies are all going to unite to take down and destroy Facebook. That that could happen. Amazon and Google could do a tremendous amount of damage to Facebook if they wanted to, but they won't. Oh, you mean the standard isn't really a standard, it's an excuse. They wanted to shut down Parler, they wanted to destroy it. Why is that? Well, in Parler's lawsuit, they show that that one of the questions that Amazon was asking them when they were trying to prevent, you know, trying to stop uh, them from shutting them down was is Donald Trump moving to Parler? That's what they really wanted to know. Well, here's the problem with that. If you have a bunch of companies that work together to make sure that Donald Trump doesn't move to Parler, which would then make Parler go up in growth by exp- exponential numbers in just a matter of days, that looks like good old fashioned anti competitive collusion, doesn't it? There are laws about things like this. Anti competitive practices aren't allowed. You're not allowed to price fix, and you're not allowed to person fix either when it comes to social media platforms. This lawsuit could get a whole lot more interesting. Now what you hear is, well, you can't say that everybody who voted for Trump is like the people who went into the Capitol. Response. You can't say that. What? Everybody's like everybody who voted for ex- Trump is I, like them. And now I just explained to you, if you if if you are on that side, you need to think about the sides you're on. I am never on the side of the Klan. I am never principal people, conservative or liberal, never on the Klan side. Principal people, conservative or liberal, never on the Nazi side. Principal people who are conservative or liberal, never on the side that treats their their fellow Americans as less than, that says that your fellow Americans should not exist, that says your that says your fellow Americans should be in a concentration camp, or that sides with slavery, or sides with any sort of bigotry. Right, and if they That's say a, I don't agree with those people, I just like Trump's policy. Well, then get out of the crowd with him. 
get out of the crowd. I wasn't him. in the crowd. I just voted for Trump. You're in the crowd who voted for Trump. If you voted for Trump, you voted for the person who the Klan supported. You voted for the person who Nazis support. You voted for the person who the alt-right supports. That's the crowd that you are in. You need to hear this because I know a lot of you will dismiss that's Don Lemon at CNN. He is very dumb, as are many anchors at CNN. He is very dumb. Who cares what he says? He is vocalizing. The reason he's doing this is because it appeals to his audience. And he is vocalizing, meaning the CNN, CNN viewership, what they feel back to them because that drives ratings. His audience thinks exactly what he's saying. You, you should know that. They believe that if you voted for Trump, you are guilty in the way that he's suggesting. You, you are guilty of being the supporter of a white supremacist. You are guilty of being a supporter of a, I mean, I, I, they'll even say Nazi. Now, I, I know that for a lot of you, that was also a particularly painful recitation of, of allegations from Don Lemon because those things he's talking about, putting people in camps, uh, slavery, uh, the, the Ku Klux Klan, those are all things for which we have the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party must be held responsible. The Democrats were the pro-slavery party. The Democrats were the Jim Crow party. The Democrats were the segregation party. The Democrats were the internment of Japanese Americans party. That's just fact. That's just true. But notice that now they put it all on Republicans. Do you think that they care one bit that Donald Trump managed to get more of the black and Latino vote than any previous GOP candidate in, in 20 years for the presidency? Does that matter? No, that doesn't matter. Do, do they take any indicator of that, that there are a lot of people who are black and Latino who see Donald Trump and understand that, no, oh, this guy's actually not a racist. He's imperfect. He's rough around the edges. Not a racist, though. But they need to have Donald Trump viewed as somebody who you're not allowed to support. It's not even that you have bad judgment for doing it. If you do it, you are transgressing and should be punished. I've been telling you this all week. It's about humiliating Trump voters. It's about forcing you into a society where you're basically in a constant re-education camp online, in the office for your job, online at the grocery store. If you voted for Trump, you're a bad person and you have, you have something to atone for. That's what they want you to feel. That's what they want you to think. And it's just wrong. It's just wrong on, on so many levels, right? I mean, so, there are many people that vote for Trump and feel like he's very flawed and has made some, some, uh, some bad, some plenty of bad decisions. But overall, they, first of all, like the Republican Party more the Democrat Party. I mean, we, we could sit here. We really going to talk about this? I mean, Democrats are, are the party of, of the celebration of abortion, for example, which is, which is just morally heinous. I mean, they can sit around and try to come up with all kinds of rationalizations and justifications and slogans and my body, my choice and all this stuff. N not on vaccines, by the way. My body, my choice doesn't apply to that for Democrats. Um. But at the end of the day, we realize what abortion is, and the Democrat Party has embraced this. And, and I, I do believe that it's a, a moral rot at the center of their conscience that affects everything else that they, they do and see, and, and their, their view of the world around them starts with they have convinced themselves that convenience is more important than human life. That's, that's a, a very corrosive moral proposition. But if we're really going to do this, we're going to hold people accountable Start to look at what Democrats have done and what they really believe. Um, I mean, the, the expansion of the term white supremacy uh, that's, that's been underway now for years. I've been warning about this. I told you uh, this is now just a, this is a, a more weaponized version of the old everything is racist routine that Democrats used to do. Anything that they didn't like, oh, that's racist. That's racist. All through the 90s and the early 2000s, that's what they would say. You know, you, you would oppose Democrats. Ah, it's because you're a white guy, you're racist. Wait, what? I, I just want less government 
interference in my life and lower taxes. That makes me that makes me racist. Oh, that's racist. Now it's your white supremacist because that lost that that accusation of baseless racism lost its sting. It lost its impact over time. So what they what they have now is your white supremacist is what they say. And if you if you think that's any kind of exaggeration, this was yesterday during the an, another a second sham impeachment process against the president. Here's Representative Cory uh, Cory Bush referring to. Well, you'll hear what he says about Trump. Play two. St. Louis and I rise in support of the article of impeachment against Donald J. Trump. If we fail to remove a white supremacist president who incited a white supremacist insurrection, it's communities like Missouri's first district that suffer the most. The 117th Congress must understand that we have a mandate to legislate in defense of black lives. The first step in that process is to root out white supremacy, starting with impeaching the white supremacist in chief. This is what she said, starting with the white supremacist in chief. Uh, Donald Trump's a New York guy, grew up in Queens and Manhattan. Uh, Nobody thought he was racist until he ran for president. And now he's a white supremacist. Okay. That's that's because they're really taking a, a fair view of any of this. CNN, CNN's Andy McCabe. Oh, you mean if you were part of the resistance and you abused your power? Andy McCabe seemed, really seems like a sociopath. And this is a guy who's a Democrat activist who was the acting FBI director and would do anything to protect the Democrat establishment, the deep state and the swamp, and, and was sanctimonious about it, too, and really believes the MSNBC talking points. He's now a, a purveyor of CNN talking points, which is the same thing. Oh, it's all about it's all about coded language, uh, the, the coded language allegation here. This is one you've been hearing for quite some time. Play eight. President Trump is a master at coded language and the use of dog whistles. And there is no question that that statement included some of those same references simply by leaving out the comments that you've mentioned. He sends a signal to his folks to fight on. Uh, he, he has never come out and formally undercut the central theory of this of this uh, domestic terrorist rebellion, which is that the lie that the that the election was stolen from them and his failure to do it last night is uh, absolutely unforgivable. I dismiss that statement as a, as a self-serving attempt at damage control. Uh, so Andy McCabe is, is a despicable person. Um, we know that. And this is a guy that, a lot of that yells at subordinates for leaks that, that he himself gave to newspapers when he's at the FBI. I mean, what, what, a, what a scummy thing to do. And this is a guy who was part of the at the very top of the Russia collusion smear against the president, which was more than just a mean thing to say in the press. They they mobilized the criminal, the the criminal investigatory and prosecutorial arms of the federal government to go after a president because he says mean things about The New York Times and CNN. That's what Andy McCabe was at the top of that effort. No accountability really for him. I know he was fired, but the guy should have been. Uh, they should have been fired and and investigated for criminal abuse of power. And, you know, I'm not a big lock them up guy. I'm not oh this person should go to prison, uh, you know, because I think we have to be very careful with that. But Andy McCabe, what he did was real abuse, real misuse of position. Um, but coded language, you see, even when Trump says don't be violent, it doesn't matter because when Trump says don't be violent and be peaceful, what he's really saying, according to the left and the libs, is, yeah, be terrorists, mount an insurrection. It doesn't matter what he says. They're, they're going to stay with this. Oh, and you're not allowed to believe that the election had any problems whatsoever, or else you're also. If you think that there was still fraud in this election, you, Andy McCabe wants people to know, are, are encouraging an insurrection and domestic terrorists. Agree with us on politics. Or you're a terrorist. That's the Democrat position right now that's being, uh, that's being uh, given voice all across the media. And it's, be, it's being echoed all throughout the Democratic Party, and it's disgusting. Oh, but they want, they want unity. Yeah, sure they do. Put 
Pushing this idea that the attack on the Capitol last week bore any resemblance to the Black Lives Matters protests over the summer, it's not just dumb, it's disgusting. Stop comparing protesters marching to protect their rights with anarchists storming an election to strip us of ours. Stop it. You sound stupid. Okay, so who who are the people that were smashing and looting stores and throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails at cops? Because... Because Jimmy Kimmel, late night comedian, seems so sure that it's a disgusting thing to talk about BLM peaceful marchers. So I just want to know who, who destroyed uh, hundreds and hundreds of businesses across the country, looted them, burned some to the ground. Who burned that police station to the ground in Minnesota? Who threw a Molotov cocktail into a cop car here in New York City? Who shot two uh, L.A. County sheriff's deputies, almost killed them both, shot them in the neck? Who did all that? It wasn't Trump supporters. Right? Who were the people that caused millions and millions of dollars of damage to public and private property because they were unhappy about policing? I, I just want to know. It wasn't Trump voters. But you see, if you point out that there was something nasty about any of that, if, if you point out that there were people spitting in cops' faces, calling uh, black police officers, this is on video, horrible racial slurs, under, undermining them as, as human beings, doing everything they can. If you point any of that out, you're the problem, Jimmy. And look, Jimmy Kimmel is a moron, but he's a very rich comedian because the guy's played in the system and done what he's had to do to get ahead. But if you take your political advice from this guy, you're just not very smart because he's not very smart. Rich, yes. A, a, a has a, a, a big audience, unfortunately, is known as a good person. No, it's actually considered a really vicious SOB inside the industry. So how do you know that? Because I know people who know people who work in the entertainment industry. I am far, far away from all that stuff. Uh, but he's not the only one who's got the, the rhetoric dialed up to the ac- absolute maximum here. Uh, you have uh, somebody who is is at least smarter than Jimmy Kimmel, Bro Cuomo, over at CNN, talking about how that you know, this is it looks like uh, war zone stuff going on right now. Play sixteen. The Secret Service is now too concerned about violence that President-elect Biden will no longer be able to travel on Amtrak from his home in Wilmington, Delaware, because of the in the wake of what happened and all the chatter about potential threats. Security is being heightened at capitals all across America, all 50 state capitals under threat of armed protests in the run up to inauguration. No external terrorists ever did this to us. We've never worried like this, even after 9-11. I didn't read about it in a book. I lived it. I was there that morning. I was there for days, weeks. I lost people. I covered it. I went to train and then I covered wars abroad. I've seen ugly things that this country now resembles, but I've never seen this country more in doubt about safety at home than right now. And the enemy is us. Now, I just want to be clear they they are talking about what happened at Capitol Hill. The enemy is us. He means Trump supporters, by the way. He doesn't mean just the general American people. He means Trump supporters. They're talking about Capitol Hill the way that they uh, would speak about it if men, you know, if men and women, you know, armed went into the building to take it over and were firing at police officers. Now, there are people that stormed the building. No question. It's horrible. There are people that were pushing through and, atta- and, and punching cops, but they didn't actually go in there armed with with rifles as part of a coup to take over the building and, and hold it as that would be an insurrection. And they're speaking about this like that is what happened. It is a riot. Let's let's remember it, it was people planning what they what they thought was a a violent political spectacle, but within the limitations of not actually going force on force against, say, the National Guard with guns blazing. And an, oh, that's what you see in countries where there's actually a, a coup. I mean, the people that stormed the Capitol building didn't think that if the National Guard or the FBI were called in, that they were going to be able to fight them off. Now, I know these distinctions, this honesty about what actually happened is, is very, this is very tense right now. You're not allowed to say these things. But insurrection would be the overthrow of the United States government. 
the people that ran into that building, were, were they really going to overthrow the... Some of them might be deeply mentally ill and, th- and think that they could accomplish that. And I'm sure we'll hear about them and their text messages about how they're going to, you know, they're going to be in, in putting a new dictator in charge or something or that, that Trump will be president for 50 years or whatever. But overall, you had people who made a very bad decision. And, and as we see, it has unfortunately played right into uh, Democrat hands about authoritarianism and the crackdown on Trump voters and all of this. Uh, and in that sense, it, it is a disaster. Maxine Waters, speaking of overheated rhetoric, Maxine Waters has said the following about Trump. Play 12. It is reported that the president of the United States watched the invasion from the Oval Office of our Capitol and seemingly enjoyed it. I want you to know we should be concerned that the Republicans will not defend him and he is capable of starting a civil war. He must be impeached. He must be stopped now. The president is not going to start a civil war. This, this kind of talk is not helping. This is not, this is not making everybody feel better about the future of the country. This is not uh, making everything calm down and, and move to the peaceful transition here. When you're talking about 80 to 90 percent of Republicans all completely condemning what happened at Capitol Hill, the riot, and that's what the numbers are. Those of you listening, it's 80 to 90 percent of Republicans are saying what happened there was, was just uh, was awful. Uh, There is very, very clear condemnation of this. Now, they still, I understand, the left will still play this game of, oh, BLM, there were no riots. I mean, it it is the the biggest gaslighting I I think we've ever seen in this country, at least in my lifetime. There there were no BLM riots? Who was doing all the rioting? Who was marching around in the streets at night, breaking windows, stealing from Louis Vuitton stores and sneaker stores and throwing rocks at cops and lighting things on fire. Who's doing all of that? Not, not, not BLM peaceful protesters, they say. Well, who was in charge of all of that? But no, instead we have talk now of, of civil war. And the Democrats, think about what they were able to do with the Russia collusion lie. Now they're going to be taking, act, taking action on the Trump insurrection lie. That's their plan. 